McDonald's has a Snickerdoodle McFlurry now. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> you're, getting, you're getting super targeted ads. Sponsored by McDonald's, not... <laughs> Hello! Welcome back to my channel. My name is Evelyn, and it's another extra, extra special episode of Baking with Books, because it's a completely different human. Hi! <laughs> this is Cameron. You've met her before. Long time um, ago. A long time ago in a couple vlogs, but here she is being heavily featured in a video. I feel so special. Ooh. So we were hanging out and Cameron was like, I want cookies. And I was like, if we're baking cookies, you get filmed. So <laughs> Cameron recently read the Percy Jackson series for the very first time because I made her. <laughs> and so in between, uh, sections I'm gonna bug you about it okay okay good. yeah <laughs> and she found our recipe today it it's it's Disneyland's snickerdoodle cookies just very on brand with Evelyn yes ah, I've never tried this recipe before but it's snickerdoodles so like how how hard wrong? can it be yes. you can't go wrong to my friends in Iowa sorry you've been replaced or actually you were the replacement, but I was first. <laughs> but I have my yeah, camera back now. <laughs> I'll always be here. <laughs> Three and one half cups of flour. Okay. Well, try your mother's micromanaging this from afar. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I'm probably getting low on flour. I should buy another one. And then when I went to put it away, I'd already bought another one. So I've got two whole bags of mud open flour in there. So. Well, we're using it for you. A bunch of. <laughs> Was I not supposed to say that? No, you could say. Oh, okay. It. No, come here. I don't know if your audience knows where you're from, so. No, yeah, they know where I'm from. Overall thoughts, like what? What's up? In general, when I read a book like Percy Jackson, so like you know, those they're like, they're YA novels. Is yeah. that right? Yeah. Okay. They usually like the the love story was very quick. There at the end, it was like okay, now they're in love, and, like, I know it was, like, a progressive, like, feelings thing, but, like, it was very fast there at the end. That was, that was cool. <laughs> that is your overall thought. That is my overall the, thought. the whole thing. You're um, like, the love story progressed really quickly. It, it did, it did. <laughs> That's your takeaway. <laughs> um, no, but I really liked it. Um, I ca I'm not a reader, so for me to read an entire series within even a year, <laughs> it's very quick. For me. I think the hardest one to get through was the one with the maze. The... Battle of the Labyrinth? Yes. That one was probably the hardest to get through. Just because of, like, where... I think what I was envisioning in my head just wasn't capturing me. I liked it, but it was hard to get through at times. I really liked the one... I think this is the second book, maybe. It was, like, Calypso's Island. Is that right? He ends up on Calypso's Island yes. in Battle of the Labyrinth, actually. Wait, no, not Calypso's Island. The the one island where they all turn into like rodents. Oh, um, Circe. Circe, yes. Uh, so Sea of Monsters. Yeah, sea that's of the monsters. second book. That was really good. I don't know. I just thought it was really funny. That sea, yeah, the guinea pig scene the is pig iconic. Scene. <laughs> I loved that so much. I think that's probably my favorite. <laughs> Bye. 
belt. <laughs> you can sit on it. You don't know how to do this any better than no, I, I do. No, I don't. That's why watching the struggles is the better option. Okay. 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 It, for it being a book for like younger audience, it had some like really deep underlying meanings, and I really appreciated that. Um, I liked how it like talked about stuff like oh, like parent parental problems, like. I know in like Harry Potter, I haven't read Harry Potter, but I know they talk about how, you know, his parents are dead and stuff like that. And, but it like really went into like, oh, um, Annabeth, like, you know, this really hurts her. And like, I think it validates a lot of feelings that younger people experience. Family is complicated. Yeah, so. and I think that's important to, for kids to know that they're not alone in that kind of stuff. Also, I liked how he touched on like, that they weren't, but, you know, the half-bloods, they, they were all dyslexic, and I thought that was really interesting. And I know that was based off of his... His son, son. yeah. Son, yes. And I know that definitely helped his son cope with a lot of, you know, because you will feel weird in the world just being human. We all feel very weird. <laughs> I know I feel weird right now. <laughs> I know personally that I struggle with a lot of, like self-doubt and internal like oh well, do p other people feel this way or am I the only one struggling with this or am I making the right decisions or do people judge me for this and uh, this one thing about me that's a little weird or maybe I have trouble like expressing my thoughts as as I do right now you know like I I've not always been the best at making friends and it just shows like so many different personalities especially Tyson um, you know, he's like, he's so baby, I love him, <laughs> and Percy's like, oh my gosh, this is my brother, freaking, I, I can't stand this, he's my brother, but like, I gotta accept that, that was, I understand that feeling, my sister has autism, and I know that I, growing up, like, I would get so annoyed with her, because everyone would, like, talk about it, and be like, oh, why is she acting like they, that way, and she's always struggled making friends, and with a lot of other stuff, even though she's gotten a lot better, so I know how that feels, definitely certain, like, struggles in my life have brought me to appreciate her more, and I know that happened with Percy and Tyson, <laughs> and it's cute, I guess just, there's so much to relate to, from like the characters. The way he likes the little, the sea cow things. <laughs> I think that's so cute. He's just a cupcake and I want to love him.
do you think your godly parent would be if you were a demigod? Hmm. Ooh. Hmm. I wouldn't say Poseidon. Definitely not Poseidon. Huh. I'm thinking about all, like, the... When they, like, come in and help and stuff like that. Yeah. What did Artemis do? Like, what's her personality? She, I know she's the hunter. She, she doesn't and... have kids. She's got hunters. Right, right. So she's the maiden Definitely goddess. not. <laughs> <laughs> you would not be a hunter of Artemis. No. <laughs> Who's Zeus's wife again? Hera also doesn't have kids. Right. Because she's faithful to Zeus, but Zeus is not faithful to her. Yeah. That, yeah, I'd be Hera's kid. Well, you, you can't be but, Hera's but kid. But if I could be. I think of all of the gods and goddesses, and I'm like, I don't really identify with them. I don't really, I don't know, I'm not really brave. And I'm not of the water. I'm not fiery or angry. Ever. You're kind of musical. That's true. So you could be Apollo. Is he the one with the... S- s- the sun somewhat? chariot. Yeah, yeah. sun chariot. He's kind of a interesting character. Oh, uh, if you ever get to the trials of Apollo, that is so true. He's a disaster. Isn't he the one that was trying to make haikus? Yes. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I say things and my friends are like, okay, Kim, I love you, it's fine. That's kind of what Apollo is. Oh my gosh, he's literally, the, the, his kids are the healers at camp, Cameron. I'm, I'm a nursing major. <laughs> I'm dumb. <laughs> well, there you go. I would be Apollo's kid. You're a nursing major who's musical on the side. That's, the like, side. totally it. Okay, yeah. What's a monster that you would, like, not want to fuck with? Like, oh, I can curse? <laughs> yeah, you can curse. Okay. First of all, Medusa's scary shit. <laughs> Oh my god. Also, but I don't want to be a guinea pig either. <laughs> but also, I'm not a man. Maybe I'm safe because I'm not a man. Rick Riordan's looking out for the women. <laughs> I feel like all of the female monsters are awful. <laughs> if you're a female monster, just no. The Cyclops seemed scary or whatever, but he's so stupid you can't really like be scared of him. You know? Mm-hmm. You're like, oh, okay, this guy's just a big dummy. Like, okay, Percy's got this. But then you go in the labyrinth and you're like, oh, is he gonna live? Well, of course he is, because this is a kid's novel, but, you know, I was like, oh. Characters die. Yeah, but the Percy's not gonna die. He's like the main squeeze of the series. <laughs> also, I knew Annabeth wasn't gonna die, because I've heard Percybeth, the ship name, way too many times for that to happen. <laughs> Oh, like they okay. Have a ship, so. You say it, Persebeth, right? Is it? Okay. No, no. That's how I say it. But oh, okay. people online are like, that's not how words work. It should be Perkabeth. Which, like, I'm like, it's not a word. It's a ship name. So, like, it's Perse because it's Percy. It's not Perky. So. If it's or Perky, that would ruin the series. <laughs> Isn't Percy the name of Perseus is mm-hmm. the name of a god and it's Zeus's kid yeah. actually. Yeah. So what's up with that, Rick? I <laughs> learned about that when I went to Greece. Yeah. So which is which is why I started reading the series to begin with because I went to Greece this summer. And reading the third book when you're in Greece is really weird. I must say. <laughs> I was like on the bus and I was like. Oh, I mean, in the next series, they they end up in Greece. So. If you ever read that, you'll be like, Haha, I went there. Yeah, I beat you. Actually, I did. This was written before my time. Sally says that she wanted to name him Perseus because Perseus is the only demigod from a myth who gets a happy ending. We stand, Sally Jackson. Yes. <laughs> so hard. Yes. You know what was really scary, though? Um, Luke's mom. That was really scary. That's not a monster, though, but yeah. she... Because it's like that hit of reality in the yeah. children's book that you're like, parents are actually like that. That's real. It's not it, like it is. It wasn't, but it, it's, it's magical, but it's real. But yeah, like parents are actually like, that. like some kids are in homes like that. And I can't imagine like, you know, because, you know, they're like, oh, yeah, well, she was with this guy and then this happened and like now she's all messed up. But it was because of like magical reasons, not because of like abuse or 
something like that. And I was just like, whoa, that really stuck with me. Cause she was like crazy, but that that's a real thing. Yeah. Um, the way that um, some deeper things are exposed, but with the magic, you know? So it's like, it's like, okay. Like metaphors. Yeah, <laughs> metaphors. Yeah, I, I appreciate that. Cause I feel like we shelter kids a lot and we don't like, there, there's some kids that are like living in that. And you know, yeah. I don't know. I appreciate him. We're <laughs> fucking toothpicks! Uh, yeah, I'm gonna poke it with. Yeah. We are creative. We actually make it sound like sweet. You know what? I just touched it. Here we go. Continue. Next part. Yay. Next batch. <laughs> I done did good. Yeah. I know. I started reading these in like the fourth grade so if you think that you'd read them then that you actually would have appreciated them and like For finished what they them are, I feel like I could have finished them but fourth grade Cameron used to read books for like the the romantic interest. Like that's the thing I read books for because I was like I was, like that was my thing. I was I've been boy crazy a while, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> so I don't think I would have appreciated some of the bigger important themes to take away from it, or, like the symbolisms. I don't think I would have understood them. So I'm glad I read it at I was 18. I'm 19 now. Oh, a month or two ago. But yeah, I. I don't think I would have appreciated it as much. I mean, I definitely didn't appreciate some of the, these things until I read it the like second or third time, but mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, because like he sneaks it in there. He does. And I know in his other series, he oh, yeah. cares a lot more about He like, he started out like small and now he's like, hey, trans rights, bitch, <laughs> and et cetera. Yeah. So yeah, he's so good and his imprint Sorry. Yeah. I could talk about this for hours, and I have told you all of this. <laughs> yes, yes. I, I really just appreciate that kind of thing, because even as I do reread other series, I don't, or just plain books in general, like, it's hard to f find those things that authors, like, really care about that they put in to that sort of thing. It He cares about the story, but he also cares about, like, leaving some sort of um, message. You can tell he used to be like an English teacher. Mm. So. Imagine being like, Rick Riordan was my English teacher. Like if you <laughs> could say that, I've never disliked an English teacher, ever, never. One of my English teachers gave me a book cause I left halfway through the year to move it was in seventh grade, and she gave me this book, I'll Be There by Holly Goldenberg Sloan, and I still remember, um, it was, she knew the kind of books I liked because she knew me, and it was like a love story, it was, it's a really good book, and I think I still have it, and I <laughs> love that book, and for the longest time I would tell people it was my favorite because I was like, my English teacher gave me that book. So what I'm getting from this is like, yeah, I made you read Percy Jackson because it like is important to me. But what I should be recommending to you is, like, young adult romances. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> That's all that I have for you this week. If you liked this video and you want to see more from my channel, then hit that subscribe button and... Thumbs up? Thumbs up, yeah. Let me know whether or not you liked this uh, very, very special edition of Baking with Books. With that being said, my name is Evelyn. I make new videos every magical Monday, and I'll see you real soon. Bye-bye.